Hello everyone, Satorn here giving you another quick Vicky 3 tutorial. This time it's all about colonization, so let's get into it. First things first, not all nations should start colonizing. It's very expensive. You need a pretty big pop to make it happen quickly. You also need bureaucracy, and you're going to be fighting against some of the bigger countries. You're going to be fighting against Britain, France, Spain, Portugal. They're already starting to colonize. So if you haven't started yet, if you don't have the text, which I'll show you uh, later in the video, then you're, you're already behind. So it's probably not worth trying to fight that. Maybe later on, you can decide maybe going to war with some of these countries to get the land. But right from the beginning, I wouldn't probably colonize. So if you do decide you're going to colonize, you need to know where you can. So looking at the map, you can see all the states that are colored in. Well, those are already colonized. The ones that have a border that's colored, but it's clear on the inside or white on the inside, these are colonizable. So you can see Africa's got a lot of land that you can take. Uh, Australia has a little bit. South America has a little bit. And America has some. Uh, but other than that, there's not that much land to colonize. So you got to keep that in mind. You also need to be able to have a declared interest in that area. So if you're not actually located in this area or part of that strategic region, then you can't colonize there and you have to do a declared interest. You also need to keep in mind that you have to be able to reach the state that you want to colonize. So for example, here you can see we got the coastal line. So Kenya, we could actually get. But if we go here, which is being blocked by Oman... We can't colonize this because we have no bordering land that we own. So there's usually a pretty big rush to be able to hit up the coast. And this this is why Portugal is probably taking the coast here. So they're blocking in what you can colonize. To start colonies, you need the colonization tech. So that's the first one. It'll give you a plus two to your max institution investment for max colony affairs, as well as you need quinine. This is actually very important. This removes all effects from malaria in your own colonies. And that has a huge debuff. I'll try to show you over here. In one of the colonies here, you can see malaria has a minus 90% colony growth speed in non-homeland states. So you want that right away because that removes that debuff. Uh, that, that's quite huge. Then also going down the line here, you want to pick up civilizing mission. That'll give you another plus one to your institution, as well as malaria prevention, giving you another plus one max to your institutions for colonial affairs. One thing to keep in mind, too, is a state does not colonize all at once. So, for example, Portugal is actually colonizing this state, and you can actually see it here. It's saying being colonized by Portugal, but it only has pretty much the coastline. So as time goes on, it's going to take another little piece and another little piece. So it takes a very long time to take over a whole state. So a lot of times these will also have low infrastructure. So pretty much as you're colonizing a state, don't think you're going to use it for a very long time. To increase the speed at which your colonies grow, you need to invest into your colonial affairs. And you can see this in your institution here. So if you look back at the text that we did and to increase our max level, you can see you get 0.1 for the first one and then 0.2. And this is per 1 million of your population. We can check that out here. It's going to be off because there's the malaria debuff of minus 90%. But if we hover over this, you can still see... And later on, you can find the uh, calculation here as well that is generating 0.36. It's very low because then the minus 90% from 2.85 million incorporated population, 0.1 per 1 million. This is then split between three colonies because you can also have multiple colonies going at the same time. But again, that's going to reduce the speed. So there's a colony here, and I think there's probably another colony uh, somewhere around here. Yeah, another one that's going on. And uh, there's probably more. So there is one more. So that that's also impacting. So you can grab more land, but it's going to be very slow. Also, other countries can come in and they can start trying to colonize as well, as long as they have access to it. While colonizing, you also need to keep an eye on the tension. The tension will increase over time as you keep taking little piece by piece of their state. What you want to do is potentially, if it gets really bad, you can pause your colonial growth. And what that'll do is over time, you'll see the tension will actually go down. Uh, if it gets too high, a battle will break out. So you need to definitely keep an eye on this. Also, other laws will make this tension even worse. Before we talk about colonization laws, we need to talk about unincorporated states versus corporated states. When you finish uh, colonizing the entire state or while it's progressing, it'll also be an unincorporated state. So it'll be getting a minus 25% infrastructure debuff as well as conscriptable battalions will be minus 50%. We will also won't be collecting taxes and they'll have very little political strength. So overall, they're really not a part of the government. They're really there for to get resources, right? So uh, later on, we could decide to incorporate that state. And what that's going to do is cause bureaucracy a lot of bureaucracy it's also going to take a lot of time it's going to take somewheres i've seen between 20 to 30 years depending on how close they are and what their culture is so it could take a very long time uh, for this to happen but it's worth it because then after that right you can get taxes and it really is becomes a part of your country 
Lastly, laws for colonization. You need to make sure you have one of these. So colonial resettlement is the first one. You get a plus 100% migration attraction in all unincorporated states. So you got to keep that in mind. It's not just ones that you're colonizing. So if you go back here, you can see for the decrees, greener grass campaign is only 50%. We're talking 100%. So this is double that amount for all unincorporated. So you got to keep an eye on that. If you don't want your people migrating out of your main states, then this may not be definitely the one for you. I would use colonial resettlement usually for when uh, you have states that are closer to you and ones that you plan to incorporate later uh, because you're already going to get some population that's going to move over there. Colonial exploitation is the second law. It's got the same colonial growth as the 0.1% per level of your institution. So there's no change there. You get a plus 10% throughput in unincorporated states. So again, that's all unincorporated. That's really good, right? So you just get more resources out of it. However, you get a minus 25% tension decay. So that's where, again, you may end up with more fights and battles. Like I was showing before, your tension is going to grow and it may be harder for you to keep taking over that given state. Also starting wages and substance output in unincorporated states are minus 25%. So that's quite a bit there, but I think the the trade-off is pretty good. So this is really for, I would say, if you're colonizing a lot of states or if you have a lot of unincorporated states that you are probably not going to incorporate at all and you don't care about taxes and you just really want the resources that are there, this is definitely the law for you. In summary, if your nation is strong enough, probably in the top 25 rankings, I would say colonization is an option for you. Again, remember, you have to have a declared interest and be able to reach the land that you're trying to colonize. You're going to be using a lot of bureaucracy. If you like this type of information, if you have any corrections, put it down in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe and notification button. They're free. And as always, for the swarm.